Our story today is called Ruthie and the Not-So-Teeny-Tiny Lie. The author and illustrator's name is Laura Rankin. Hmm, I wonder what this story could be about. Ruthie loved teeny things. The teenier the better. Her toys were the teeniest imaginable. She had dinky dinosaurs, itty bitty trains, ponies no bigger than your pinky, and teddy bears that were barely there. Do you have itty bitty toys? Ruthie loved finding teeny treasures, too. At the beach, she searched for the smallest seashells. The flowers she picked were no bigger than fairy wings. She even had an eggshell from a hummingbird. Now that is really teeny. And wherever Ruthie went, she carried some teeny thing in her pocket. Hmm... Do you see what she carried on the bus? One day at school recess, after jumping rope and swings, Ruthie took a turn on the twirling bar. When she landed, she saw something in the grass. It was a little box with a teensy window and an even tinier button on top. She couldn't believe her luck. It was a teeny, tiny camera. Ruthie looked through its little window. Then she pressed the button on top to take a picture. Click! Just like a real camera. This was absolutely the best thing Ruthie had ever found. And it was hers. Click! Click! She tried it out every which way. Say cheese clouds. Click. Say cheese bug. Click. Say cheese school. Click. Say cheese Martin. Click. But Martin didn't say cheese. Martin said, hey, that's my camera. Ruthie was startled. No, it's not. It's mine. Give it to me, said Martin. It's mine. It is not. It's too. No, it's not, shouted Ruthie, and she raced back to class. Oh, my. Whose camera do you think it is? I guess we will find out. Let's see. What is going on? asked Mrs. Olson. Ruthie's got my camera, cried Martin. I got it for my birthday and I dropped it on the playground. But Ruthie wanted that teeny tiny camera in the worst way. It's mine, she yelled. I got it for my birthday. Well, that wasn't true at all. Not one teeny tiny bit. Mrs. Olson looked at Martin. She looked at Ruthie. Goodness, this is a problem, she said. The camera can't belong to both of you. I'll keep it safe in my desk drawer for now. Let's talk about it again tomorrow. Hmm. How do you think Ruthie and Martin are feeling? Look at their faces. Ruthie's stomach flip-flopped all the rest of the day. She couldn't remember the answer to two plus two. When Mrs. Olson read a story, every word flew straight out the window. Oh, I think that she's starting to feel something. What do you think? The bus ride home took forever. Hi, Ruthie, said Mama. How was school? Okay, mumbled Ruthie. Hmm, do you really think she thought it was okay? Dinner was macaroni and cheese, Ruthie's favorite, but she couldn't eat. Not one little bite. 
Aren't you feeling well? asked Papa. I'm not hungry, she said. At bedtime, Ruthie was close to tears. What's the matter? asked Mama. So Ruthie told Mama and Papa the whole story. What do you think went wrong? asked Papa. I said it was my camera, cried Ruthie, but it's not. It's going to be okay, said Papa. You made a mistake, and tomorrow you can fix it. I think Mrs. Olson and Martin will understand. Do you think Martin and Mrs. Olson will understand? Let's find out. But the next morning, Ruthie could barely eat. Maybe Mrs. Olson won't understand. Maybe Ruthie would have to sit in the timeout corner. Maybe Martin would never talk to her again. Maybe no one would ever talk to her again. Not one teeny weeny word. The school bell was about to ring. Ruthie took a deep breath. and began the long walk to the front of the room. Mrs. Olson's desk seemed so far away. Good morning, Ruthie, said Mrs. Olson. I have something to tell you, said Ruthie in a very small voice. The camera isn't mine. I didn't get it for my birthday. I found it on the playground. Mrs. Olson didn't make her sit in the timeout corner. She didn't even look mad. Instead, she gave Ruthie a hug and kissed her on the top of her head. Thank you for telling the truth, said Mrs. Olson. That took a lot of courage. Do you think Ruthie is going to feel better now? Let's find out. I'm so sorry, Martin, said Ruthie. It's okay, said Martin. Oh, so now she's even apologized to Martin. I think that was a good idea. Did Martin react like she thought he might? I don't think so. All at once, Ruthie's stomach stopped flip-flopping. She even skipped a little on her way back to her desk. She got the right answer to three plus seven in math. After lunch, Mrs. Olson read the funniest story Ruthie had ever heard. And on the short bus ride home, Ruthie realized she didn't miss that teeny tiny camera. Not one teeny tiny bit.